In this video, I wanted to make a quick video uh, just talking about the trend analysis functionality inside of Control X. It's something that we often overlook, and um, yeah, I figured I would make a quick video because I do get questions on it periodically. Um, so just to do a brief explanation, I have a bunch of dimensions created already on this part, as you can see. And um, so I have a completed dimensioned part where I loaded up the CAD model and created a 3D compare, some comparison points, dimensions, GDT calls, 2D cross sections, all of those things. So that is done already. And the first thing I will show, and this is another piece of functionality that I kind of overlooked that kind of gets paired with trend analysis, is the automation uh, aspect the batch process specifically so if I come over to my tools here and I come over to batch process you'll see that I can come in because I have a completed inspection that I built on the CAD model I can come in and I can add files to this part here so I'm just gonna come into my sample data like I always do here and we will go ahead and add these three parts. Um, so once you add those three mesh scans um, to this file here, you can come over here and you can say, I want to use the result data one. Um, I want to export a report. You can tell it that you want to save individual models, which will save the entire project for each one. Now, if we are going to do a trend analysis you have to use the XML option and you don't have to pick you, you're not restricted to pick just one you can actually choose others as well so in this instance what we'll do is we'll say I want to do a PDF and XML and then I'm gonna dictate where I want these to be saved here so I'll come back in here and I will say actually just leave it same folder same place and then you can actually say, you know, uh, if I want to uh, add a file name here, a prefix to it, but I'm just going to leave that alone. So now what we're going to do is run this, and it's going to measure each one of these individually, right? So let's move this over here so you can kind of see it. And I'll explain some things along the way. So it is going to load up each individual part run the complete inspection, and then output those two report types. Now, for those of you that don't uh, understand the trend analysis aspect and what I mean by that, or maybe you haven't heard that term, um, it's really uh, the, the concept of reporting on reports, right? So you can see a trend between part number one, two, three, four, the same dimension between those. And that's essentially what the trend analysis functionality in our software does. Now there are whole software solutions out there that focus on just that uh, kind of functionality, SPC packages that are more like statistical analysis packages that go very deep in their analysis, right? Ours is, basically designed to bridge the gap between somebody that is looking to do some trend analysis, but not necessarily looking to dive all the way into like this full-fledged package. This is kind of like an in-between thing. So with Control X, you can create a bunch of reports and then at once, uh, when I say at once, you can kind of run the trend analysis. You have to run it every time that you want to. It's not a dynamic situation. I think that's the distinction I'm trying to make here is you will run that on the batch of reports uh, in an instant and then it will output a report which we'll cover here in a second. Um, so yeah, it's going to take dimension number one of all parts and show them side by side. Dimension number two of all parts shot side by side. And really in the reality there is just to track the wear of the tooling or creep in the process. Um, there's lots of different reasons that I'm leaving out here that, of why you would want to do that. Um, but we'll just leave it at that and then I will move on to the next stage here once this finishes. 
So now it is finished calculating and uh, you can see here I have uh, the last part open on screen and one thing that it will tell you is it will tell you a little report that there is a, uh, a dimension that failed and I leave this in here just to show this um, that if a dimension fails like this concentricity failure um, so sometimes they fail because there isn't um, proper scan data or there's like a, a host of variety of reasons why like something might fail but most commonly is you didn't scan the area um, so a lot of times um, I like to show that that it will tell you that if there was a failed dimension on the report but it finished it out um, so now I'll just bring over here this is what it output you'll see that it output the PDF in the XML document here and again, the XML is really only used, at least for for me, I only use that for the automation uh, or the trend analysis aspect. But if we just go ahead and open this PDF, and I'll bring it over on the proper screen here, you can just see that here is the report and the dimensions. So it's just a basic report with 2D dimensions, 3D dimensions, GD&T callouts, etc. So there's my basic report. So now it comes time for the uh, trend analysis side. So if we come over to the menu and come down to tools, report tools, and you'll see this trend report. So just like before, when you create a report which we're not covering in this video right where you create a report template this is kind of a similar aspect but um really what you're doing is importing reports and then reporting on those right so this is kind of like the report template generator that's going to remember how you create this so if i come over here and we just navigate back over to the location again. So now I'm going to say open all of those. And here you go. It analyzes the report structure. So it's basically identifying the structure of that report and all the dimensions that are in there, all the groups, all the dimensions, etc. So then you can hit generate and then you can hit Excel. That's what I use. You can generate a PowerPoint PDF. Um, Excel is the best. I think a lot of people would like to use Excel to write scripts on top of it. So in this instance, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm just going to come up one and put it in that folder. You know, I'd normally like put a date or something on there, but trend report and then hit save. So now it's going to write out that trend report for me. So now that it's finished here, I'll show you page number one. Page number one is kind of like a report where it has your disclaimer and the part number and things like that, which I did not enter. And then it has like typical, here's the reference data, here's the scan data, alignment information, and then I'll skip over to 13. These are the control points. Um, so we're doing the control points one, two, and three right here. So there's control point one specifically. And you'll see that we have, um, you know, we run the statistical information here. Um, specifically right here is what people tend to ask about is the CP, CPU, CPL, CPK values um, between um, each dimension right so you'll see there is the statistics and then here's a quick graph now I only did three parts right so it's only going to have three data points three part numbers but the way it's organized you can see right here this is how it's set up where it's on pages inside of the Excel spreadsheet and you can go through each individual one and you save the spreadsheet and there you have your basic trend analysis like i said i try to make sure that to explain that there are 
is a difference between what we do here and like some dynamic tools that are designed to do just this type of statistical analysis. Um, and this is kind of like an in intermediate gap. Now, if you were going to communicate with another tool that does this, what you would do is report with CSV files or text files. And then you'd utilize that other software to recognize the formatting that's in those files and the naming convention, which they're uh, very good at doing, right? So if you were going to say, hey, this doesn't do what I want, I want to utilize my SPC type software, then I can output the CSV or text files and then go over to those. So that is your alternative. So this is basically just a high level view of how trend analysis works inside of Control-X. I, I hope this was helpful to everybody. Thank you.